Thanks for listening to CarCast on Podcast One. I'm Dave Detman, also known as Dr. Get. I've got a new podcast called The Big Idea. And every week I talk to inventors and visionaries who made it big in their respective industries. We'll tackle weekly trending tech, provide inside tips for your success, and go deep dives on the latest and greatest innovations. And I know you're going to love this part. I'll also have plenty of free giveaways. Who doesn't love free stuff? So listen to and follow The Big Idea with me, Dr. Gadget, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podcast One, and wherever you get your podcasts. Hey guys, welcome to CarCast. Today we're going to talk about uh, ooh, a potential engine issue with the new Bronco, maybe the new sales model for vehicles, how you're going to get into that, um, some new car tech, and, uh, and more. Before we get started, here's Geico. Would you love to save money on insurance? Well, of course, who doesn't love a good deal? Well, when it comes to great rates on insurance for everything, Geico can help. Insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, RV, even homeowners, condo, and renters coverage. Save even more with a special discount when you bundle coverages. Plus, add the easy-to-use Geico mobile app and 24-hour roadside assistance, and the switch to Geico becomes a no-brainer. Switch today and see how you can save. Simply go to geico.com to get a rate quote or contact your local agent. Welcome to CarCast. I'm Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea, here with Bill Goldberg. Bill he's, Goldberg. He's on the road. Oh, man, we're getting some feedback there. Uh, there uh, you're on the road. You're driving through Atlanta. We're just going to grab you for a few minutes. Uh, just kind of tell us what's going on, and then, uh, and then you know, we'll, we'll let you go, because I know you guys are literally in the middle of... of <laughs> yeah, man, I, I flew into Atlanta, uh, um, Gage and I and his buddy Desmond, one of his trainers, and we flew in here, and uh, uh ex-teammate of mine, Chuck Smith, who played uh, with the Atlanta Falcons, has one of the best pass-rushing camps, organizations, training facilities in the country, in the world. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we figured we'd fly Gage out here and get him a little uh, instru- one-on-one instruction from the man himself. And part of that, uh, uh, part of his training today, we were there at 8. And uh, the, the end part of his training today is that we're driving to the University of Georgia, Athens, Georgia, which we are entering right as we speak. And uh, we're going to take a tour of UGA, man, where I used to go to school. So, um uh-huh. Okay, it's, yeah. Uh, it's, it's cool to be back in Atlanta, and uh, cool to be here in Georgia. All right. Wait, is Gage with you? Because I've got questions. He is with me. All Let right. me put you on speaker real quick. <laughs> okay. Okay, Gage. Hey, Gage. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing all right. How How's the trip so far? It's really fun. Yeah. You did some training this morning, and uh, you know the, the training. It, it sounds interesting, but I, I gotta, I gotta ask you: uh, I, Are you leaning a little more toward baseball or football? Because you've been a rock star on the baseball field uh, recently. You know, I, I talked to your dad, and I see posts from your mom all the time, and it sounded like it sounded like baseball was your jam. What, what's going on? I honestly don't know. I want to play both in college. I want to try. It, both in college. Okay. Is I I guess I haven't really thought about it, but is it possible to do or does one coach fight over you over the you know over the you go, "Hey, you know, you're spending too much time playing football. You got to play more baseball or or the opposite." Also, in college they make you like read books and do math and stuff. So you got to have time for that. <laughs> no, it's possible, but it just takes a bunch of hard work. And you gotta be smart. You gotta man time. Yeah, right. Okay. Now, as far as uh, as far as this particular college where your dad went, uh, did you decide you wanted to go here, or did you not really have a choice because of the old man? <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> no, I, I, have, I have a choice, but I want to go here. Really bad. Uh, okay, just. Just check it. I know because he's sitting right next to you. You can say that because he's sitting right there. I understand. <laughs> um, all right. So listen, but I did want to ask you. 
Uh, you got you got the new Bronco, and uh, we've been talking about it here for a while. The Bronco. Um, I I think your dad probably spilled the beans to our listeners before you even knew about it. <laughs> I can't say for sure, but it's possible. Uh, and as much as we've talked about the Bronco, probably over the last year, you as a new owner, young guy, I wanted to get your perspective. How do you how do you like it? What's going on with I, you and your Bronco? I, I love it. It's a it's a good ride. And you can go off roading it too, so it's a plus. But yeah, I just I really like it now because you've you've been around a lot of different things, and I'm a little surprised uh, Dad put you in a Ford and not one of his favorite brands. <laughs> but Me too. Uh, but uh, but I do like the idea of the Bronco. So you got the four door, correct? Yes. Do you do you know what engine you got in it? Two point eight or two point seven or two point eight. Two point seven. Two point eight. Yeah, the two point seven. Then okay. Now, and you guys have been outfitting it with a few modifications. Can you tell us what you guys have done to it? Uh, well, we got a new exhaust. We put on a two-inch lift. We put on new tires. ADD bumpers. New ADD bumpers. Mm-hmm. Nitto tires. Nitto tires. And new wheels. Rigid lights. Rigid lights, too. Okay. That's the wheels? Yeah. So did you did you plus size the tires? Did you go up a size? What's on yes. it? What's we, on it? 33s? You go to 35s or? We have 35s. 35s. Okay. With a two-inch lift. So I, did you did you drive it? Before you guys did the lift and the and the bigger tires, because I'm curious yeah. what your thoughts are. How does it ride before and after the lift? Do you have thoughts on that? There's no comparison. It's it's a lot better after. After it is. yeah okay, right yes. all right. Uh, have you guys gone a little off roading in it yet? <laughs> a tiny bit. <laughs> but not that much. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, but now it's just the commuter, right? You're just taking it mostly to school? Yeah, to school, practice, training, and just going out with my friends and stuff. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. good. It sounds it sounds good. Are you, are you done with the school year now? Did it end? Because I feel like out here locally, there's been like some graduation parties and stuff. Are you guys done now? Yes, we finished two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago. Okay. And then, but you you have another year of high school? Two. Two, two more years. Two more years of high school. All right. Yes. Yeah. So break the news about the engine. <laughs> Literally, there, no pun intended. <laughs> but, but, yeah, no pun intended. Yeah. I haven't told Kate. Okay, so... Uh, I, not, not to scare you. Don't worry about it. But if you get on the Bronco forums, uh, there's been some issues, uh, the Bronco six G forum. It's a, it's, it's a great place by the go, by the way, if you get a chance, sign up, log in, just check in with everybody there, see what's going on with Bronco news. Um, but there seems to be an issue with the 2.7 liter EcoBoost engine. And they're not exactly sure, but it does result in catastrophic engine failure. It's possibly something with a valve train related problem. Uh, it sounds, some people are saying it sounds like they drop a valve. And when that happens, it, you know, it kind of damages the piston and, and the head and, 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 all sorts of things. So several owners of the Bronco with the 2.7 engine have already had their entire engines replaced uh, by Ford. And the uh, the NHTSA, which is the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, they haven't officially issued a recall on the vehicles yet, but they are investigating it they're requesting information from owners and dealers and 
they're trying to figure out what's going on with this engine that this engine is potentially uh, dying. Um, and in some cases, it's it's on the freeway at speed, right? So so far, about fifty uh, owners have reported issues with it, and I don't know how many have engines replaced. Um, so there is potentially an issue. Uh, Ford is aware of it. Now, the good news is, is Ford is saying whatever this issue is, as they figure it out, it is covered under their five-year, 60,000-mile powertrain warranty. So anybody that does have the issue, look, if, if the engine breaks, something goes wrong, it sucks, you're going to be stranded on the side of the road. <laughs> uh, but, but just know that Ford is, you know, Ford will take care of it for you. Now you're going to have to go through the hassle of downtime with the truck and going to the dealer and doing all that stuff. But yeah, just kind of a crazy thing. Um, we weren't really expecting this with, with this engine, but you know, new vehicle, new, a lot of new stuff launching for the first time on it. And as we all know, it's just, you know, one of the questions that comes up all the time is when a new vehicle hits the market, people always ask, should I get that? Or should I wait a few years? And it's exciting to get it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of early adopters out there, myself included. But just know that, you know, two, three years from now, a lot of the bugs get get worked out, you know. But, uh, yeah, potentially a little issue with your, with your truck. So, uh, you know, I guess we'll see how it goes. Now, Ford w- may figure out what the problem is before more engines break. And if they can issue a recall in a fix at the dealers, then you can get ahead of it. Ford may say, "Hey, well, br- bring your bring your Bronco into the dealer, and we're going to do something. You know, we're gonna we're gonna replace some part or head or valve springs or something that'll fix the issue, and then it won't break." So that's kind of what we're hoping for: is Ford to figure out what's going on. And then just issue the recall and get you guys all in there and get fixed up before an actual, you know, before an engine breaks and you got to do an engine swap. But well, uh, I mean, I, I I feel like it would be fine if my engine blew up because I see there's an opportunity to get a health motor. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Well, first of all, you've been hanging around with your dad too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very it's very possible you guys have been hanging out a little too much with that. Um, now that isn't to say. Here's the issue is if your engine breaks, Ford will swap in a new engine at their cost. But if you take the time to go, hey, uh, you know, maybe your friends are in Florida at Gearhead and go, hey, have you guys uh, built yourself up a 2.7 Ford before? Because now might be the opportunity <laughs> to, to build me a hot little uh, engine swap, you know. Uh, for that thing. But, uh, you know, in the meantime, I'm just saying, be aware. If something does happen, don't freak out. Uh, just get off the road safely and uh, and just wait for the flatbed. <laughs> but Yeah, well, I, I, I wouldn't be complaining, so it's fine. I think you. I think you'll be fine. You've got uh, you've yeah. got friends. You've got resources. But I just didn't want you to anybody listening with the Bronco. Is there parking or where? Where can I get, put this thing so I can yeah. meet with the boys tonight? Oh, uh, for one second. I think you can park over there. You can park over there. Okay. Been <laughs> like years since I've been here. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're back. Yeah. All right. Well, listen. I just wanted to uh, check in with you on the Bronco. I think you guys. We're going to have a good time out there on your trip. Uh, enjoy your Bronco. Uh, and, uh, yeah, check in with us again. You know, Gage, you got to hop on the show again. Tell us more about the Bronco as you're getting a little bit more used to it and get some more time into it and figure out what you like or what you don't like. Um, and, uh, yeah, we just kind of want to get, like, an honest thought on it, you know. Um, oh, my God. Why are you? <laughs> well, right now you're you're over the moon because you got a brand new Bronco and you're 16 and it's your first car and you know like like all of us like we're just ecstatic about that. But you know, down the road from now, you start to go, oh, you know what? You know, maybe maybe the brakes don't feel good. Maybe the stereo is mm-hmm. not that great. Maybe there's a few things you want to change, or maybe. 
you know, there's a few things to make it a little more convenient or, you know, there's just some things like that. This is what we do, right? This is all we talk about on the show is how we're personalizing our vehicles and, and making them fun. And you pick the best platform in the world, right, to personalize the vehicle because the Bronco is just made to be so modular. And as we've seen at SEMA last year, and I'm sure we'll see it this year, there's going to be a million aftermarket parts and things you can do to that thing. So you're going to end up finding some some really kind of fun things over time. Yes. <laughs> and we will be getting a bunch of more upgrades on it. Right, Dan? What? <laughs> <laughs> he said a yeah. bunch more upgrades, Dad. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know what he said. But, <laughs> well, we'll see. Hey, at the end of the day, it's a great vehicle right now for him or where he's at. And, you know, um, hopefully uh, we don't have one of those that's going to uh, blow up. Yeah. But if it does, it gives us an opportunity to put something in there with a little more horsepower. So, you know, there's always a, a positive side to any negative situation. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, the birds are chirping. <laughs> What's that? Uh, oh, I, the birds? The birds are chirping. Man, sounds like they're on the podcast. We uh, are literally walking into the Heritage Hall at the uh, University of Georgia as we speak. So. Dude. It's just a beautiful, nice little college town, man. So the birds are hanging. I uh, I'm I'm going to be out in Atlanta for the PFL event in a couple of weeks. I, I unfortunately our paths aren't going to be able to cross, but uh, I'm excited to uh, to go out there and check out the the next MMA event that uh, you know that Bravago is a part of. You know, um, so, I can't uh, wait. I can't. I need to get out there. Uh, hopefully sooner than later. You, you know, and. Uh, uh, you know, I, I actually may be coming for that one with you. It's quite possible because I'd like to bring Gage back here. So, um, you know, we may be we may be crossing paths. You never know. Yeah, you know, they're doing three events, um, uh, three Friday, Fridays in a row. I think it's the 17th to 24th and then July 2nd or 1st or whatever that Friday is. Um, I'm going to be out there on the 17th, but uh, we can certainly plan around whatever needs to happen. And uh uh, a few of our brand ambassadors, some of the fighters that um, that we are working with, they'll be fighting on the 17th. Antonio uh, Carlos Jr., shoe face, he's fighting on the first weekend. And uh, nice. and our rock star Julia Budd is going to be fighting uh, Kayla Harrison on the on uh, the beginning of July at you know the third week out there. So I spoke to her. And, and hey, don't 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 uh, count her out, man. She may be going against Kayla. Kayla is the biggest thing. I, in uh, women's MMA right now, but hey, she is the the most formidable competition Kayla's had, and Kayla hasn't uh, hasn't taken everybody out in spectacular fashion. So uh, hey, man, it's an MMA fight. You never know. That's right. Anything goes. Um, I will tell you this: that you know, win or lose, a lot of eyeballs will be watching that event, and that's uh, that's uh, good attention for uh, for Julia as well as as Kayla. Um, I spoke to Julia. We did a Zoom call. We 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 chatted a bit, and she's working hard. She's at her training camp and getting ready. And uh, and it just so happens that um, uh, one of our 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 good Bravago flavors is Rainier Cherry, and she's got a Rainier Cherry <laughs> farm in her backyard. <laughs> nice, because she's uh, that's just appropriate. She's up in the Pacific Northwest, so that's that's where her home is. So she's literally got Rainier cherries in her in her in her yard. Um nice. All right guys, I'll 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 let you go. I'm going to wrap up some news. We might call it a little bit short today cuz I know you guys are running around, but um uh enjoy your time out there. You guys have a good trip. We'll check in with you next week. Thank you, partner. You all be well. Thanks guys. Take care. Yes, sir. Uh, they're gonna have a good time out there. Gage is a is a machine. He's such a good kid. He's he's a he's a beast when it comes to uh, to baseball. By the way, he's a catcher, and I've just seen the. Not only does he have a hell of a swing, but he's got a a rocket ship for an arm. Man, I've seen him throw people out at second base, and just just a rocket. He's just it's gonna be a hell of an athlete. Um, excuse me. Some of the other things I just wanted to go over real quick were. Uh, um, increase in, uh, I don't know if you guys saw this, but an increase in registration fees based on vehicle weight. Now, paying registration fees based on weight is not new, 
but the idea of major increase. So what they're saying is, um, I believe fees right now um, in, in Washington, D.C. specifically, but they, they're talking about rolling this out nationwide. Uh, I guess we'll see how that how that applies uh, state by state. But uh, seventy two dollars a year added to the registration fee or part of the registration fee for vehicles thirty five hundred pounds uh, or less, which doesn't seem like there's a lot of those these days. Um, and then it jumps to one hundred and fifteen dollars for thirty five hundred pounds to five thousand pounds. And then $155 for anything over 5,000 pounds. That's the current system, $72, $115, $155. What they want to do is is leave the $72 for under 3,500 pounds, but then jump to $175 for cars 3,500 pounds to 5,000 pounds, $175, and then from 5,000 pounds to 6,000 pounds, which is a new category, will be $250 per year. And then anything over 6,000 pounds would be a $500 per year fee to your registration cost. Now it's starting to get to some pretty real money here, 500 bucks. Now what they're trying to do is if you have an EV because of the weight of the battery and all of those vehicles being exp- uh, being very heavy, there's a waiver if you have an EV, right? So an EV would be you'd have a special rate of $36 per year for the first two years. And then I don't really know where it goes after that. Um, I, but it's I don't know. It, it's kind of interesting. I'm not exactly sure what what the point is. Um, by the way, if you have a, a, a larger vehicle, if you have something over 10,000 um, pounds, you're, you're looking at something like $700 registration and then an extra $50 for every 1,000 pounds over 10,000. <laughs> so my, my thought was, okay, I get it. The weight of the vehicles, more wear and tear arguably on the roads. This money should go toward repairing uh, roads, right? Which it seems like every city needs uh, out, out here in LA for sure. We need this, but no, that's not what the government is saying. They're saying no, no, no. This isn't this isn't to repair the roads. They're saying that uh, it's a safety issue. They're saying clearly when a pedestrian or a cyclist comes in contact with an SUV, there's much more damage to that person than if they got hit by a Honda Civic. <laughs> I, I get. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I get the rationale, um, but I don't know how they're going to make anything safer by raising the rate. They're literally just trying to deter people from buying trucks and SUVs. They're saying if we make the registration pretty expensive, you may think twice about getting your, you know, your F-150, and uh, I don't know, maybe you get a Honda Ridgeline instead. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't. It, it's really kind of unclear where the money is going to go. This whole thing just kind of feels like a money grab to me. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure they even thought about all of the details there. But anyway, that's uh, that's uh, potentially coming down the pike. More money, more money to spend. Uh, you know, we've been talking for a while about. We've been talking about how especially during the pandemic, how things, I think the buying experience is going to change uh, a, a little bit less in the way of like going to dealers and the dealers having huge inventory and you test drive a car and you walk around the lot and you pick the kind of the color and the options that you want and you kind of drive home. Um, but also the whole experience of going in and negotiating and trying to haggle this and that and everybody pays something different and in in a lot of cases on cars that we talk about here there's crazy markups on things and uh, we had talked about that process has to go away at some point right like at some point we're going to go more toward online sales order the vehicle maybe you can go to a dealer and test drive a version 
uh, a dealer might have, you know, two or three, you know, F one fifties in their in on, in stock. Excuse me, that they use for test drives, but then you just order the vehicle however you want it, and you get it from the manufacturer. You you pay the sticker price. It's non-negotiable. The price is what it is. There's no markup, but there's no discounts, and that's it. And then the dealers essentially become, I don't know, like customer service centers. You pick up your vehicle there. You take your delivery there, or they bring it to you. Um, you get your maintenance done. You can get some modifications done, and you know the parts department, the aftermarket department, things like that. But um, Ford is really leaning into it. Ford is saying they definitely want to do it for all of their EV vehicles, Mustang Mach E, uh, F one fifty Lightning. Um, they just like you just you order it, you pay the price, and you go in and get it, or the dealer delivers it to you, or whatever. I I don't know I I don't mind this I don't I don't mind this process um, I I still think people need to be able to test drive cars and maybe go into a dealer and and maybe the dealer experience is is a little different maybe you know in the showroom there's the different materials and the different colors you can see the interior colors they have like leather swatches or cloth swatches and maybe some seats you can sit in if there's different seat options on cars and you want to figure out what seat is more comfortable for you. Um, if you can, if you can go to a dealer and test a lot of those things and then test drive a vehicle while you're there, and then maybe you could just get online while you're at the dealer and place your order or go home and place your order. Uh, and then when it's there and it's ready and you get what you want, you, you know, you pay the price and you're locked in and you're good to go and you, you get your vehicle. So that seems to be maybe the direction I think we're going in. Ford wants to go that direction. Um, certainly a lot of the EV startups, you know, the Lucids and the Teslas and Rivians and and stuff like that's the model that are going under. I, they're a little different because there's not a lot of test driving going on. And I still feel like the test drive is important. I get it. You can get sold on a car on paper. You know, you know the performance is there. It looks good. You know, you just assume everything works, and and you could be right. There's a lot of things we can buy sight unseen. But honestly, it's like, you know, maybe you want to drive it. Maybe if you want to see if it's comfortable or not. Um, I was just driving recently the new Nissan Pathfinder. Um, it's great. It's a huge leap forward. Uh, over the previous Pathfinder. It has all the tech you want, uh, CarPlay and all the safety features. It looks good. It even has kind of this baby kind of Range Rover Sport uh, look to it. Um, it's uh, it's three row. It's good. Um, I, I kind of feel like the the only real flaw for me was the seats were a little flat. The seats were a little flat and a little uncomfortable. I did a road trip. I spent a couple hours in the car, and I don't know if just my ass was in a bad mood or that seat was really starting to irritate me, but that's just one of those things that I think you need to experience. Like You need to just you know go for a test drive and see if it's comfortable or at least sit in one of those seats at a dealer for a while, you know, uh, you know. And and see if it's something that you like. Are the bolsters too high? Uh, you know, some things like that. Listen, when I bought my my Mustang Mach One, I I didn't get it with the Recaro seats. I got it with the the standard seats. Now, there's a couple reasons why. Is um, first off, I wanted the heated and cooled seats, and uh, the trim package I got, the appearance package, has. Uh, an orange stripe on the seat that matches the rest of the car that only comes in that color combination with the appearance package. So it was a little bit more unique in my opinion than the Recaro's. And if I ever want to go to the track, I can put a racing seat in it. So I just pick the more comfortable seat, um, especially the heated and cool options are, are really nice. But ultimately I drove a number of different Mustangs, GT 350, GT 500, the GT, the performance packs. And the Recaro's for me, being a smaller frame guy, the, the, the sides on on my back and on my lats, they sit up a little high. They kind of jam into my armpits. Uh, if I was a taller guy or maybe longer torso, 
um, those seats would fit me a little bit better. But not all of those racing seats are or sort of racing-inspired seats, if you will. It's not like a full racing seat. They're not always the most comfortable option, so you want to be able to try those things out. So um, anyway, that was just kind of a, a thought on on the new sales model. And um, by the way, some thoughts on the Nissan Pathfinder. I'll post some images up on my social media so you guys can check that out. Um, I, I, I like it, by the way. I think um, it's a it's a very good option to consider if you're looking for, uh, you know, a mid-priced three-row SUV. I think they start at about 36,000 and change, go up to about 50, maybe 50,000. The one I drove was nicely equipped, about 47,000, I believe. Yeah, 47,000. It had the V6. Um, I'll tell you that the the throttle response on the V6 seemed a, a, a little slow. I felt like it had power, but it just seemed like you had to really mash the gas to get on that power. I, maybe it's just more of my driving style. But if you put it into sport mode, it, you know, obviously it spices things up a little, increases the throttle response. It doesn't really change the power, doesn't add, a, you know, a horsepower. But makes it a little peppier, makes it a little bit more fun to drive. I don't know if you, you know, drive around in sport mode all the time. Um, I didn't, but it was more fun to put it in sport mode. And it just seems like if there was, if the normal mode was a little bit peppier off the line, just had a little bit more throttle response off the line, then I I think that would make it a little bit more fun. But I guess it really depends on how you use it, especially if you're going to be towing anything. Uh, maybe you, you you want it to be a little bit more gentle, but you know, aside from that, I think it's um it's a pretty nice it's a pretty nice vehicle. Um, the other thing is, uh, so a- if you guys follow Apple, if you're a tech fan, Apple did their worldwide developer conference uh, recently. Um, this isn't really like their new product release. This is more um, on the developer side, some things coming down the pike and all the app developers and software developers and hardware developers that, that work with Apple software and hardware, what's kind of in store for them and how you sign up to get the developer pack and, and whatnot. But one of the things that came out um, that's uh, interesting in the car world is – uh, Apple CarPlay, they're they're definitely trying to take more control over all of the screens of your vehicle. Instead of just having CarPlay pop up on your infotainment system and you, you know, controlling, you know, maps and some music and stuff, they're saying, well, it might make more sense to just take over all of the screens, uh, you, you know, your gauge cluster and everything, and then you can modify it, you can you can design it and tune it the way you want and change things. And so instead of the car just sort of plugging in via USB and and taking over entertainment, uh, it could effectively run everything. Now this is kind of interesting that. You know, they showed some examples of this. They showed big screens, kind of like um, the new Cadillac Escalade has that that great dash. It has the infotainment system, but also has the the gauges and the screen that kind of goes almost across the entire dash. Uh, imagine CarPlay being able to control all of that stuff, and it might allow you to take certain apps and move it into different areas. Like if you want the infotainment system to have uh your your audio and not have to click off the audio to get to the maps well maybe you can move the maps up where the gauges are uh and then run the audio in the middle or vice versa or you can be able to move things around so features like that could be kind of interesting and then uh Jim Farley CEO of Ford was recently <laughs> I don't know if this is the timing on it, or maybe somebody asked him specifically but it seems like in the past week um maybe it's just coincidence that Apple is saying hey we're going to we're going to move forward to, to controlling all of the screens in your car and then Ford said uh Farley said yes he's gave a directive recently to uh to Ford software engineers and he said stop trying to develop navigation maps and our own software for all of this stuff. It's like, it, it seems like it gets outdated very quickly. Uh, it's not what everybody's using. Everybody has to learn different systems. He's like, we should just be, 
working with Google and Apple and just have them do it, just outsource it and get it done that way. And I don't know, I start to think about it and I, I don't think he's wrong. Um, there was a time that I used navigation in, in cars that I was driving that were native to the car manufacturer. But now I, anytime I need directions, I just, I just plug in my phone. I just plug in my phone. I'm using Apple Maps or using Waze. And I don't know. I mean, I guess, I guess, what are your thoughts on that? You know, um, does everybody plug in their phone now? Uh, I guess if you're using the the native maps in your car, it's because maybe you don't want to use as much data on your phone. Uh, maybe data is is an issue. Um, you know, the price of the phone of data could be an issue. I feel like a lot of plans are pretty pretty robust with with data plans right now. So I, I'm not quite sure, but um, I don't know. You guys tell me. I'm just kind of curious to see what you guys think. Should uh, should Apple CarPlay and Android Auto start to take over more of all of these systems in your car? Would you be fine with that or or no, or hard pass? But, um, you know, the aftermarket systems as well, you know, in my my truck, my, my Ford Lightning, um, I think you guys probably saw it if you followed it, you know, maybe a year or so ago. I haven't taken photos of the interior in a while. We're doing some new things on the truck, but uh, I, you know, I, I put a touch screen in there. We took out the single DIN radio. I put in an Alpine stereo and it's got a floating screen. It's got like a nine inch screen and, and, and it's good. It works fine. There's a few features that it doesn't have that I wish it had, which I think the new Alpine unit has. Um, it doesn't have the RDS. It doesn't have like the, you know, the, the data coming over the radio, tell you the names of the bands and the music and stuff. I think the new version does. Um, it didn't have HD radio, which uh, I think the new version does. Um, and this is the same for a lot of the uh, aftermarket audio manufacturers, Pioneer, Alpine, uh, I think JVC. I think they're all going in the way of, of all this new technology. It works with Android Auto, works with CarPlay. Uh, the touchscreen is great. Um, you know, it doesn't have the the high res audio uh, from Apple, but I think the new version again does. Um, it doesn't have wireless CarPlay, but it, I think the new versions do. All of the you know the aftermarket manufacturers have it. So now you're kind of getting into this world where. And by the way, I I didn't want to cut up the dash in the Lightning, so I still have the single din, din radio. And for Alpine, I have the Halo system, so it's a single din and it has a a nine inch screen that kind of sticks out and floats above the dash. So I didn't have to cut anything up to put in a big double din. I didn't have to have a big fold out screen kind of old school that tucks away like the DVD player screens. And I want to say a lot of the, the, the car, the aftermarket manufacturers, they, they all have these types of screens now single din into the dash. Um, and then has a big screen. You can get nine inch, I don't know, 10, 11 inch, whatever you want. And it's cool the way it adjusts because you can adjust how far out it comes in. So if your radio is deep into the dash, you can move, you can still plug it in and then have the screen come out, you know, an inch or so. You can move the screen up and down, left and right, side to side. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can configure it to make it work. And it actually worked out really good in, in my truck. Uh, you know, having wireless car play and stuff would be kind of neat. But anyway, that's kind of how... Just another example of how we're getting all of this technology um, into old cars and into new cars, right? We can we can get some pretty modern tech into an older car without really cutting it all up. You know, if you can fit a single DIN radio now, you can get all kinds of cool stuff in there. So, I don't know, just kind of a thought on that. Um, you know, and speaking of uh, of the Lightning, if you guys have followed on my Instagram, we've been doing a few a little modifications to it. Um, subtle stuff that you guys will see. Uh, first of all, the door handles, the exterior door handles, they're, they're kind of a, kind of a lightweight stamped metal. It has a plastic push button, thumb button to open the door. It's a little flimsy. Um, it has some sharp edges on it. Uh, it looks a little, oddly enough, it looks a little small for the truck. Um, the metal's kind of thin. So we started, uh, redesigning it. My friend, uh, Chris Brown and I have been working on it, um, uh, he's a, he's a great designer and he's been working on this stuff and, in, in some CAD software and we 3d printed some new handles and, 
Uh, we did one version um, out of out of billet aluminum, but we're going to make a few more modifications. So unfortunately, uh, those are going to probably end up being scrapped. But we ended up making um, a little bit heftier uh, a door handle. Um, it's got smoother radiuses. It feels way better on on the hand. It's amazing that something like a door handle really kind of makes a difference. The push button is aluminum. It has a nice indentation where your thumb is. It feels strong. It feels secure. Uh, we did some stuff on the back side of the button to make the button not wobble. It moves very smoothly um, and uh, and opens the door um, perfectly, right? It just really works well. So as we started doing that, I also started looking at the, the side mirrors. Now, the Lightning, um, the Gen 1 Lightning is a single cab uh you know, just a standard cab. It, it You can't really lean the seats back much. There's not much room there. And the mirrors always felt like they were too far back on the door, meaning too close to the driver. And the reason being is, is it has that little quarter window that you can open um, on the side glass there. So we're doing a couple of things is one, I'm doing a one piece glass conversion. Uh, so I'm getting rid of the side, uh, the quarter window, and we're doing a single piece of glass, and that glass will will obviously still go up and down. Um, but to go up and down, we have to change the mirror because there's a brace inside the door that goes from the mirror from the outside door skin to the inside door skin. Um, and if you eliminate the quarter window and use a larger piece of glass, that glass would hit that brace going inside. So we needed to change the mirrors anyway. And some guys have done this one piece glass conversion and they bought some lightweight plastic mirrors and some things at hot rod world and whatever. Uh, but we decided we were going to make our own. So um, first what we did was we kind of looked at the front of the truck. We looked at the front grill and kind of the shape. It's kind of flat in the front, and then it uh, it kind of pitches back just a little bit above the headlights. And we kind of modeled that that design theme onto the body of the mirrors, and um, did some work on those. Uh, ended up 3D printing some mirrors. Found a piece of glass from another car. I don't know if it's a like a I, th I think we're actually using like a Bronco two glass. Um, I, I got to double check to see if that's still what we're using. Um, but that's what the initial design was based off of. So we 3d printed some mirrors and the idea was to move the mirror more forward on the door toward the front fender. Uh, so you can get a better view of the side and behind the vehicle. So it really kind of changes the angle of things. Um, and then we started thinking about it going, well, it's easy for us to, to do a custom piece and move the mirror forward, fill in the holes, put some new holes and just do it that way. But then we started thinking if we wanted to make these mirrors available to F-150 owners, um, could we design it in a way that it uses the factory bolt, bolt holes, but then still move the mirror forward? And so the footprint on the door where it would bolt onto the door will stay the same, but the arm that holds the mirror is much different. The angle of it is different. It leans forward, uh, and it really kind of changes the look of it. So it would be an, a, a full billet mirror. It'll move the mirror forward, I think about two inches, two and a half inches, and it'll move the mirror up a little bit, about an inch, so you don't have to see the belt line of the door. You can get a little bit better shot of the mirror. So we're finalizing some designs on that, but uh, um, it's it'll be cool. So I, I posted uh, on my social media, I posted up on Instagram and, and Facebook, some of the, the renderings, some pictures of the of the uh, 3d pieces and see what you guys think but um the feel of it is good it's going to be a subtle change when it's done you'll see there'll be a single piece side glass a billet mirror a billet door handle um we might you know everything is gloss black and then you know the the lightning then when if you got the black one everything was body color but we might just 
offset it a little bit. Like um, we might do like a Cerakote on them. And then I don't know if it's just going to be textured or or not. Uh, it could just be smooth again. Um, we're going to have to look into that. But maybe just do just something not quite gloss black like the rest of the stuff. Maybe just something like a matte black to offset it or a very, very dark gray, sort of a dark like gunmetal gray with maybe a satin finish just to just to give it a little bit more personality. So um, anyway, if you guys see those, I'd love your comments and get your thoughts on those. And uh, if you've done anything uh, custom like that on any of your vehicles, um, please share those as well. I'd love to see those. Send me a message or or post up on, uh, on, on Facebook. But anyway, appreciate that. So, all right, we're just going to go ahead and uh, we're going to wrap things up today. And uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Appreciate, uh, appreciate you guys listening. Until next time, keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. Would you love to save money on insurance? Well, of course. Who doesn't love a good deal? Well, when it comes to great rates on insurance for everything, GEICO can help. Insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, RV, even homeowners, condo, and renters coverage. Save even more with a special discount when you bundle coverages. Plus, add the easy-to-use GEICO mobile app and 24-hour roadside assistance, and the switch to GEICO becomes a no-brainer. Switch today and see how you can save. Simply go to geico.com to get a rate quote or contact your local agent.